morning. It's a bright, cold winter morning out here this morning, and we're going to fix some warm, wonderful appetizers for you today. Um, this is was uh, Zuccarini McQuitty, Amade McQuitty. <laughs> oh, you know, we know who we are. Barely. Jane Fiquet, and I'm Rowan Hartung, and we hope you're going to enjoy what we're going to cook today. Uh, we're trying some really tasty things, and Wallace is going to tell us about them. One of the things that the Italian people often do for New Year's, and although this is a little late for New Year's, it's still cold and crisp, as Marilyn said, outside, is they make a, an appetizer called bagnacada. And then they would have this at New Year's and play cards. And it was a social event for them. So we're going to show you how to do bagnacada, and we're going to do Caprese Tomato Bites, which is another appetizer, along with zucchini roll-ups, and one that we haven't tried, but we think sounds very interesting, is we're going to do a spaghetti squash fritter. One of the fun things about working with these ladies is, and, and I do it too, I mean I'm not afraid to, to try something that we've never done before and serve it to a bunch of people and somebody says, oh, doesn't that scare you? And it's, well, you know, well, they, they do don't do like it. Either. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it will say, well, we won't make that next time. So don't be afraid to try something just because you've never done it before. Okay, now we're going to work on um, the appetizer. Which one is this? The spaghetti? This is the spaghetti squash fritter. And so we're using a spaghetti squash which um, when, after it's baked, then you're going to take a fork and if Jean doesn't, doesn't better, kill myself. Better <laughs> self, <laughs> well, I got it. I got it. It went started crooked. I don't know. Yeah, get a, get to... another knife. Well, now, now let me try here. We'll go straight to here. You've got a small See, I've got it going crooked. There you go. Well, anyway, if you okay. talk, maybe they won't watch Marilyn and I got the squad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, uh, uh, for those of you that watch The Chew on daytime television, this is a Michael Simon recipe, and it's a spaghetti squash fritter, and we're going to bake the squash, and then after it's baked, you take a fork, and you take the meat out, and it makes kind of a thin, like, spaghetti, so... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> and then we're going to mix it and make right. a filling. I've always uh, wanted to try this with this thin white spaghetti because it's supposed to be so nutritionally good for you. And if you really want to watch your blood sugar, you're supposed to eat spaghetti squash. And I mean, pretend it's spaghetti and put marinara sauce on it and all those wonderful recipes that you usually use with spaghetti. But so I'm not convinced that I'm going to like this as much as regular well, spaghetti. Well, I used to make it all the time in college. Yeah. It's really good. Well, you know, the other thing I'd like to point out is that um, Marilyn's been cleaning this with um, a grapefruit spoon. Food. I don't think there's any, uh, yeah, spoon. I don't think there's more useful tool than a grapefruit spoon. Yeah, and I know where you can get some. Really? Yes. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely. Uh -huh. Westlake's? <laughs> And Rob would probably be very glad if you came in and looked, but you might want to look at JP's Corner Market first. Uh huh. How's that work in there? Well, it's a little time consuming. So now, what are we going to do? Salt and pepper on these, or yes, just a little salt. And pepper. Well, I must admit, when it's I'm cleaning it out here, it does look somewhat like spaghetti. Maybe you don't clean it quite as much as yeah. you do. I mean, you, gotta, you want that top full off. Oh, okay. This is the season for winter squash, so we're going to see what we can do with it. And when they replay this episode in August, you can just make believe it's winter. <laughs> and you'll feel all cold again. Cool. Cool. Feel cool by then. See how stringy it is. Stringy. Well, that's why I'm wondering if you're supposed to take that off, yeah. really. Yeah. Because the flesh will cook, and then she's got to get the seeds out. Here we go. We'll leave a little bit of that in. And 
we're going to bake this at 400 um, degrees and um, hopefully it'll come out. We, we think it'll cook in about a half an hour. But the way you know is, um, I mean, you stick a fork in it, right? And that's how you know when right. it's done? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, well it, uh, you can tell. The skin's going to be soft and, and you're going to be able to get the meat out of it. Uh, this is an, a little appetizer that we're going to make. It's called Caprese Tomato Bites. And as Jean said, I got a little crazy. Uh, I told her I pitted. You have to clean out the these cherry, tomato. cherry tomatoes, and it took me a little while to do that uh, because we're going to fill them with a uh, mozzarella cheese filling. So they are. They I did that ahead of time. So, uh, it's a little time consuming, not too And bad. it's a little tedious, and I don't think we wanted to, you wanted to see all those beans. What did you do it with, the knife? Just so they know what you got. Yeah, I cut off. the top off, and then I took a little paring knife and kind of went around, and then I used a little bitty baby spoon to kind of help me. This is exactly the kind of appetizer that if you were to visit me at home and I was cooking for you, you would never eat here. I would never make these left to myself. Uh, one of the, <laughs> when we started this out, we opened this uh, basil that we got oh. at uh, CNR, and oh, the smell is just. For those of you, we have already said that it's winter, and let me tell you what, this makes you long, oh, for, long fresh for summer. Mm. Oh, that is true. And it's it, I was either that or to move to the Mediterranean, very nice, where you can get nice, it all the time. Uh, okay, basil. we what need we a do? half a pound of mozzarella. Well, this isn't too... That looks like a half a No, pound. it's not, because it, we ordered 14 ounces, didn't we? That what mm -hmm. you told me to get because there's something else we're using it for. So mm -hmm. you're going to want mm -hmm. about... A cup. A cup. cup. Maybe. 14. Oh. That's good. Here, do you want a cup? I got a cup. They do. I can tell. Look, see? There's a cup. Okay. <laughs> and then, well, you know, that's how you do it. Right. Shake in your head, what does a cup look like? And you say, oh, that's a cup. It's right, and you do not, six you do not have to use exact One, measurements. Two, that's exactly right. Three, four, five, six. I'm, I'm going to ask you just to kind of chef and odd those oh, just a little bit. That's Marilyn and I's favorite word because Lois, Lois likes to throw that one around every time we get even anywhere close to a basil leaf. Let's ship it on those. So, all right. Well. I like to say at home if I have company because they don't know what it is, you know. <laughs> of course, I didn't either until to Lois told us. So, what it is is you roll it up. It's like a, you just roll it up. Roll the leaves. And, and then, then that way it, in the, Rather than process it until those leaves are chopped, or mush. Bad. Yeah, yeah, and you don't get the juice in it that way. If you put it in the head start right. on it. So we're putting the the basil leaves in. We have the mozzarella. We have milk, and we have the the uh, cream, and then we need to put in a garlic clove minced. So Marilyn's got all of this wonderful garlic. Marilyn, you want to show them how right. to roll and uh, clean the garlic? What we like to do is just, and this, how you cannot be fresh minced garlic. It keeps for months in your refrigerator with a little olive oil on it. And, and you take it and just take the quote. We sell these at the store. And actually, if you mince a whole bunch of garlic like this, it might make your hands get red or if they do break out a little bit or something so if you take it and put it in this it rolls that right off and then you can just chop it we have we use that little chopster when I'm doing a whole bunch of garlic like we've got here I do them all get them ready put them in that and chop it up this is a very handy little uh, gadget okay to this we've added a clove of minced garlic and a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. So we're going to process this until it's well blended. I don't know how oh, that, that looks good. How that's going to I wonder if it wouldn't be easier just to spoon it in. 
Well, what did they say to do? They said to put it in a bag and pipe it in, but we'll, we'll just... Give me a spoon. I don't know if I have baby spoons Here, th this will work. I don't think so. I think you're going to have to pipe it in. We finished uh, filling. We didn't use the bag with the hole in it, which I think would have worked pretty darn good if you were by yourself, but since there were three of us, we just used little bitty spoons and filled and they taste absolutely wonderful. It's kind of a, like a brush, a uh, uh, breath of spring here. And so we're keeping the rest of it. I'm scraping this out of our little grater. And we're going to put this on the table with some crackers. But this garlic and basil and everything is just a really well, tasty you know, little dip. And I'm a little interested... They did when they the recipe just calls for mozzarella, and I'm a little surprised unless maybe we read it wrong that they didn't use that. What is that? The white stuff when you actually make the caprese? Oh, oh fresh mozzarella. Fresh. So fresh I think fresh mozzarella would be very good. I, I'm thinking maybe they didn't do that because it is probably a winner. You, you know, fr or fresh mozzarella is not as easy to find right now as it is in the summer. For some reason, I don't know if grocery stores can or keep you can it more because or fresh you mozzarella. Fresh mozzarella is because uh, I think it would have mushed better and bound. Better. I think it would have been yeah. very good. I think it's a good suggestion, Jean. Okay, now that here's the spaghetti swash coming out of the oven. This is for our fritters for our appetizer. What's it called? Spaghetti squash fritters. And see how the fork goes in. So when the fork goes in, they're done. We'll just set them here to cool for a minute so we can work with them. Um, this is another appetizer that we're doing. And it is, uh, let's talk a little bit about it when we started, about how it's an Italian favorite for New Year's. And she's going to share with you some thoughts. Well, I, I had, uh, Marilyn gave me a book. It was just on... Uh, northern Italian cooking and it focused on the Piedmont region which is where Jean's grandparents are from and my grandmother is from and it says great -grandparents. Your, well, your great grandparents my grandmother and, and according to uh, it, the author of this cookbook it says Piedmont is the birthplace of Banya Kyle. And there's an old story that Banya Calda was originated as a farmer's lunch during grape harvest time. It could be cooked at home in an earthenware casserole and then brought to the vineyard where it was kept bubbling over an open fire. At noon, the men sat around it dipping a variety of raw fall vegetables into the sauce. Doug Gonnett, I forgot you said that about the earthenware. Yeah, that's your new pot. I got for Christmas um, terracotta pots, uh, imported Italian terracotta cookware. I really didn't want to buy, I wanted to use one first to see if I wanted one, but went ahead and asked Santa for one, two I got. And they're marvelous. And they cook so, they cook so different. There you go. The, this is the stock pot. And I think that probably if I had thought about it, we'd have cooked it in, I have a deep kind of uh, saucepan, they call it, it looks like a few thing. And they cook really different because they heat, they just, they just the heat, they just heat different. Well, I mean, it's just a, it's like a, it's like cooking in a flower pot, but of course it's been glazed. And you put it right on the burner. Well, there's this whole thing. If you, no, I gotta check what I'm doing here. I'm gonna burn the butter. Oh. Um, you have to, when you get them, it had to soak in water for eight hours, it had to dry for eight hours, it had to be reheated. You have to temper them. And uh, it said that you can't cook with them on electric, directly on electric, unless you have a diffuser. Because uh, the electric burners all have hot spots. And so I have a, both electric and a gas stove, as you can see, so I didn't buy diffusers and I just use them on gas. Um, Boy, but I, I, I wish we'd have remembered that. See, you know, we're getting, I don't know, we've been doing this three years? Four, four, four years? Going on five. Oh, 
Oh, gee. We were younger when we started. <laughs> and so, so we were going to see what it, what it cooked like. But at any rate, no earthenware today. But, you know, the thing about Bunya that I can understand why you would cook it in these, they cook different. They cook slower and they cook from all around. And the thing that is very tricky about Bunya and a lot of times we'll have this at parties after carousel plays and stuff and everybody's in a hurry. You get in a hurry and you turn it up and then you think, oh no, it's going to burn. You don't want the butter to get brown. Right now we are melting butter. That, there's two, nothing. You've got two sticks. Well, I know. The thing about bunya is, is that you just don't, you always have it left over really. And you know, a very little bit of it goes a long way. And then, um, I always cut it with a little olive oil. Yes, it calls. I'm me. not a big anchovy fan, but I do like Vanya. It doesn't, to me, taste, anchovies don't taste the same in it for some reason. It, well, they because completely of the different dissolve. flavors. They, and it becomes, yeah. yeah, it becomes more of a sauce. There's also an anchovy Where's salad dressing oil? that I really like right here. And uh, uh, this, so anyway, it's very, very tasty. So here it is melting right here, and so I think we're gonna, you know, the thing about it is, is that you gotta get it, I got it now, where have I got it? If I could read the dial, it'd be better. It's, it, I had it really high, now I've got it way back on warm, because you simply can't rush bunya. It, it's gonna take, it's gonna take 40 minutes anyway, and here's some crushed garlic that we're gonna put in. You can't actually have too much garlic. I don't. I've never seen a recipe for bunya, so I don't know what they. Well, do. this this recipe that I found in this book said, Jean, a half a cup of butter, a cup of olive oil, and that's a lot and, of olive oil. Yeah, and two two ounce cans of anchovy, but twelve cloves of garlic. Twelve. So cloves. you know that's just a lot of garlic. That's a lot of garlic. So, you don't want to breathe on too many people after you eat. Well, this. the thing about banya is, is that, and we laugh a lot at, at our parties when we have it, is that if one of you eat it, you all got to eat it. There's no sitting back on it. What's this right here? That's okay. That'll work. Okay, we have this big can that I get. I don't know where I got this one. This is Roland Brand. There's all kinds of them. What did it say? How many ounces? Is it says t two, two ounce, but you've got almost twice as much. You've got two cups. You've got a cup of butter. So it, it would four That's ounces, so I would say eight. It doesn't have to be exact, as you can There's tell. There's nothing exact about it. But you think you want to finish the can? You just you add another butter? butter in it. Well, but we're going to make that dressing with it. So you want to go ahead and finish it? Well, you want to wait. Till what? Well, okay. <laughs> we can add. Well, this is a difference between Lois's nature and my nature. Lois thinks, let's let it cook a little while and see what it looks like. <laughs> I'm saying, let's just put it in there and go for it. But, okay. Let's, well, we let's, can always add a stick of butter. Yeah, I think you're going to have to. <laughs> yeah. I do too. I agree with that. <laughs> Well, I'm tired of that. Can, that can's been, anchovies keep forever. So you can get a big can because they tend to be quite a bit cheaper than getting the little cans. And I, we, grab, you use it for anything. You we use, even freeze them. We get a big can like uh, that, spread them out on a wax paper on a cookie sheet so that they're all even. And then my husband loves anchovies on salads. So then he just takes them off and thaws them out as he needs them. Oh, I never freeze them. This can's probably been in there for over a year. They, they don't do anything except there's so much salt in them. My husband won't eat them because he's just categorically opposed to eating salt, pure salt, he says. But, you know, they're salted down and it's an acquired taste. There's no, no doubt about it. Is Okay, so well, we're going to let this, I'm going to put this on 200, and we're going to set this aside because we'll have to keep an eye on it. There's no rushing it. It's got to cook very slowly. You don't want to burn the anchovy. You don't want to burn the butter. You want the anchovies just to dissolve into the heat. And so... Well, let's also say that banya kalga means hot dip. And, and so that's where it gets its name, and that's what we were talking about. And we're going to have a variety of fresh vegetables that we're going to dip into 
the sauce. Yeah. But it's going to cook up here. So, all yeah, right. The well, anchovies will completely dissolve. We'll, we'll show you another shot as it starts to happen. Okay, this is um, for our the appetizer that we... Notice how I just worked my way in there. She's yeah, learned it. Do you remember? Do you remember? remember how so, she said we push? They did push. But I learned. She pushes. She pushes and she doesn't realize she pushes. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so I have this wonderful mandolin. From where? JP's <laughs> Corner Market. It's it's a, I have to a, say, this is my favorite recent toy. It's a ceramic. It's a ceramic mandolin. I'm not sure it's going to work. Yeah, because I don't. Looks kind of why don't you, to me. you think if you cut it in half? No. Too fun. Look at that. Wow. This is what we need. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you keeping this? Okay. What are we putting in the inside of it? Oh. Well, first we're gonna we're gonna grill them. You grill we're them. Gonna, we're gonna brush them with oil. We oh, need a grill. We need a. a Isn't that, aren't those beautiful? Look at that. Uh, when you use this tool, though, this mandolin, when you get down to yeah. the end, you have to use the don't, protection don't, that's on it. Don't be you brave. Cut your finger don't off. be brave. These are stuffed with feta cheese and uh, baby spinach leaves. Yeah. Now she's getting good. And it says that we're going to put these on a um, stovetop grill. We're going to coat them in olive oil, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we can be doing is rubbing them with olive oil. Okay. Yeah. This, our bun has been cooking kind of slow. I, I'm having a little trouble with this electric skillet. Um, keeping it on warm. But you can see that the anchovies are breaking up and the butter's clarifying. And the garlic is cooking down. This is this is just simply not a complicated dish, but you don't want that anchovy to burn, and you don't want that butter to brown. You want to keep it all just going oh so slow. And it's it's coming. Kind of, the longer and the slower you can cook it, of course, the more flavor the anchovy impart to the butter. And you almost want to make sure they completely dissolve. Yeah, so we're, we're not there yet. One of the most interesting things about this meal today are the smells. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it smells And we always good. like to make sure you know that you're not smelling what we're smelling. Right, I no, I'm serious. It's a great smell. This, this butter, melted butter with this fresh herbs in it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so they're ready to be grilled, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got this pan, these gratilla pans. I'm going to pick these up while you make the filling. How's that? Okay. It says one and a half ounces of feta. And I'm, I'm guessing here because Jean's got the large economy size. That's not a lot. That's not very much. One and a half ounce would be not, almost nothing, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hot it has to be, or what? But how much was it on each side, Lois? Oh, um, just four minutes, or until tender. On each side? I think I put two minutes on each side. That's what it says, or until tender, so it didn't have to be four. We're gonna we're gonna use lemon juice and um, lemon some basil and leaves. Lemon, lemon juice. Mm -hmm. just... well, we're not gonna have room for these till we get this done, are we? Okay. What we're going to do now is we're making these zucchini rolls with herbs and cheese. And we've combined the goat cheese, the parsley leaves, uh, a lemon juice, and we've mashed it 
you can mash it with a fork or I prefer to use my fingers, but that's okay. And then we're going to put a half a teaspoon, which is not a whole lot, on one. And we're putting a spinach leaf. And basil. And then we're going to roll this up. And place seam side down on the platter. These are our zucchini roll-ups. And once again, they had feta cheese. And we stuffed them with that and... Um, Basil and spinach. Basil and spinach, and you roll them up. We grilled the zucchini first, and so I think Marilyn sampled them and said oh, they were wonderful. Really good. We are going to make the spaghetti squash fritters, and we cooked our spaghetti squash, and if you'll notice, it says take a fork and pull out I guess you'd say the meat, and it looks like spaghetti, a real fine spaghetti, maybe more like uh, linguine or something. Wow, look at that. I really didn't think it would do that. Leslie, my cousin Leslie Thrasher made a dish with this one day, and I can't honestly remember what he did with it, but it was awful good. I do remember so that. So it goes to show you, you can do a lot with squash. Different types. These are going to be interesting. What, we put, what are we putting in there? Okay, we're going to have to put um, some a little bit of sage, and you've got some dried sage, you right said. There. We run out of the fresh. In the dried, I think we've talked about this before, dried, dried herbs are usually stronger or more potent than the fresh ones. Uh, we are going to use some nutmeg grated. Mm. I don't know. The nuts in top of that. I don't know if I'm good enough. I think you are. Notice we've used almost nutmeg in, in everything. And we still haven't even used half of a nut, so yeah. I guess it may be expensive, but surely that's enough. That's I enough. Know. I can smell it. Okay. Okay, and we need two tablespoons, two teaspoons of minced garlic, some kosher salt. What happened to the minced garlic, do you think? It's in right there. We don't have any kosher salt. Yes, we do. I brought some. Uh, some fresh ground How much? pepper. Two teaspoons? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what you say, kosher salt? And uh, I need to cut up some green onion. onion. How much? Oh, I just cut that bunch up. The whole bunch? Well, take the. I understand that. The yeah. whole bunch? Well, it says one scallion, I guess. I use. Well, I use how about three? Three, yeah. And it says uh, use the green and the white. Okay. What happened to that nice knife? This one. Okay. Marilyn's cutting up the vegetables for our banya dip. Um, you can dip almost anything in banya kada that you want to taste. That's that other appetizer we've been working on over here with the butter and the anchovies. How much? It says uh, four ounces. Yeah. Is that what we ordered? That's like a lot. That's more than four, four ounces, I think. So 
now we're frying in cast iron because it fries so nice and hot. And so you got just a little bit of oil in it. And then we're dropping the shredded squash. What is it called? Spaghetti, Spaghetti squash, squash, whatever. Um, mixture that you just saw us make. And I assume that you turn them when they're brown or something? Mm -hmm. We'll let them fry for a few minutes and then we'll turn them. Not to, they're not taking it real a real long time though, are they? So what? Maybe two minutes? Two minutes maybe? That one's yeah. That one's maybe this turn too soon. This one I think is you can tell that when they get a little brown around the edges. Yeah, we, we think we turned some of them a little too soon, but the more you put in there, the cooler it's gonna be though. Okay, so we're ready to, to present our appetizers for the meal. The bunya doesn't, we don't, I don't know how you present bunya, but it's still here and it's all foamed up and nice and I think you've seen some how that looks. And it's taken it a long time to get here and you can see that the chovies are just not there anymore. And that's the whole point of the exercise right there. And this are the, the vegetables that Marilyn cut up, and they're, you, you dip them in. And there's all kinds of ways you eat this. Um, my particular family, the Chertinos, we saute ours. We take like these vegetables, and while it's bubbling and hot, we put them in there and cook them down, and then strain them and bring them out and eat them with bread. But I think we're the only people that do that. Everybody else gets a little bowl of this, and they'll take this and they'll dip a cold or a raw vegetable into it and then eat that. So it's whatever. And then here's our tomato caprese. Tomato caprese. And our roll-ups. Zucchini roll-ups. You really can roll a zucchini. The spaghetti squash fritters. Well, let's just finish those. They're nice and hot and ready to go. So, you know, we wouldn't have to have anything else for a meal, would we? Absolutely. Yeah. Some crusty bread and a glass of we'd wine, we'd be to set go. to go. And if you don't have anything else to do with your day but sit around and poke little things in cherry tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and, roll up, and roll up zucchini. And, and roll, roll up zucchini. Yeah, that's that's it. But and, you know. and Ross, what do you always say? Tutti a tabli la manjati. Come to the table and eat. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. That's how it's too